Hi everyone, today I'm going to read Henry Egg Artiste by Marcus Plister. Henry and Henretta lived in a cottage tucked away behind a thicket of bushes, right beside a large cornfield. It was the perfect place for rabbits because, if danger threatened, they could simply hide in the high corn. Next to the cottage, they had a small barn where Henry worked. Everything was quite cozy. Henry was a professional egg painter. Henretta helped bring fresh eggs into the barn. Easter was coming soon, and Henretta had already been gathering eggs for some time. Normally, Henry would start to paint them straight away, but when Henretta brought in the last eggs, Henry still hadn't lifted a finger. Henry, she said reproachfully, don't you need to get to work? Easter is right around the corner. Oh, enough with the eggs, snapped Henry. I'm sick of them. I will never paint Easter eggs again. And this is not a barn. It's my art studio, Henry said. I'm an artist, not a farmer. I beg your pardon, asked Henretta. She still couldn't believe her long years. Surely you can't mean that. Oh, Henry, think of all the children who are waiting for your Easter eggs. You can't disappoint them. The children? I'm sure they're sick of eggs too. Same old painted eggs, year after year. Think about Easter, Henry. Your eggs are so wonderful. Yes, they were just lovely. Just as lovely as they were the year before that, and the year before that, and exactly as lovely as they were three years ago. They were always lovely, and they were always exactly the same. I've had enough, said Henry, and he stormed outside. Why don't you dye them with grass and herbs and onion skins, suggested Henretta. You've got all those wonderful brown and gold and ochre tints that, that you did that before. Oh, like that hasn't been done before, snapped Henry. Last time I was up to my neck in stinky old onion skins. I don't need that again. I am an artiste. I need new ideas. And above all, I need my peace and quiet. With that, he disappeared into his studio and he slammed the door shut. Cranky as he was, of course Henry knew that the eggs had to be painted. When it came down to it, the truth was that he, Henry, was quite famous for his eggs. Even so, he was determined that this year his eggs would look different, quite different. At last, inspiration struck. He would create artistic masterpieces, artwork that the world had never seen before. Henry carefully settled an egg on the easel and began to paint. He worked all night. When Henretta nervously poked her nose through the door the next morning, she saw the first finished egg. It was a painting of a hare in blocks and layers of bold blue, red, and brown. It was hard to even recognize the figure. Henretta didn't know what to say. Uh, Henry, don't you think you can do better than that? The funny hat, the red eye, it doesn't look like something children would enjoy. Henry glared at Henretta and pointed silently at the door. By that evening, his second work was completed. Henry had painted a female rabbit, but it too was unusual. Henry's best friend, Marty Mould, gaped in astonishment when he peeked through the window. Was that, what was that rabbit wearing on his head? Bewildered, Marty stared at the new painting. It looked as if it were from ancient Egypt. Children aren't gonna like that, Henry, he said. But Henry didn't listen. Carefully, he painted on the Egyptian hieroglyphics that he had been practicing. Next, Henry painted a beautiful portrait of a lady. Secretly, he wished that Henretta and Marty would have something nice to say about it, and they did. They really liked this new painting. Wonderful, said Henretta. That looks just like one of the mothers from last year. Henry nodded and was proud that Henretta had recognized the woman. Henry painted one egg after another without stopping. He painted with fine brush strokes and bold. He painted bright pictures and dark, happy subjects and sad. Some paintings you could tell what they were, while others were just a dance of tints and hues. Watching Henry at work inspired Marty to paint too. He grabbed a brush and a sheet of paper and he got to work. Henretta didn't like all the pictures on the eggs, but she was happy that Henry had managed to finish before Easter. Well done, she praised her husband. 
Now we just need to hide the eggs and then you can have yourself a proper rest. Hide the eggs? Are you crazy, Henry blazed? Do you think I've worked all day and night on those just to hide them? I'll have an exhibition so everyone can come and appreciate them. I don't know, Henry. This is Easter. Children want to run around finding eggs. They aren't going to stand and look at paintings that they might not understand. But Henry insisted. So Henretta, Henry, and Marty set about building beautiful pedestals for the eggs. They built mounds of pebbles, padded them with fresh leaves, and then carefully set an egg on each. Or they searched for mo mossy necks, nests on the tree stumps. Egg after egg found its place in the sun, and by morning, the exhibit was ready. Although they were dead tired, they didn't want to miss the reaction of the first child hunting for Easter eggs and finding an art show instead. The sun had dried the last drops of dew from the grass when a small girl came up the garden steps. She rubbed her eyes and she stared in disbelief. Then she knelt down by one of the eggs and gazed in wonder at it. Henretta pulled Henry's arms and whispered, Look, Henry, she likes it. I think your exhibit is a success after all. And that's the end. I hope you were able to recognize a few of the artworks that were on the Easter eggs because they are all works by famous painters transferred into the bunnies. I'll see you guys next time.